Hi guys, and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve, and today we're looking at the Baltany Bubble Back Homage. So this watch was sent to me for free by the Octopus Kraken store on AliExpress. I don't have to return it, but you know that's not going to change my review one way or the other. Um, I always try and keep it real for you guys, and yeah, I just kind of wing it as I'm doing the reviews. Don't really write anything down, and uh, yeah, I just tell it how I, how I see it. Uh, retail price for the watch is $182. Uh, I've seen them dip down into the uh, like 160 range, I think, during some of the sales, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, this watch is offered in four different configurations. You have a blue dots dial, you have a black dots dial, a black California dial, and then you have this brown California dial. And all those options come with either a black NATO strap or this brown leather strap, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and I definitely think this is the way to go. The NATO strap is pretty nice, um, but it doesn't really have matching hardware. Not that this one does either, but uh, yeah, it's a NATO strap. You can find those all over the place for super cheap. And this strap is decent enough, so we'll talk about that later. So what does that money get you? It gets you a 316L stainless steel case, screw down crown, screw down case back, 200 meters of water resistance, a beautiful sapphire crystal, which we'll talk about later, and a Seiko NH38 inside. So it's a really cool package, uh, but is it worth the price tag? Let's find out. But before we do, uh, do a quick wrist check. And I've got the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical 38. I just got this one in yesterday, an absolute... Uh, you know, obtainable grail for me, and I finally got one. So uh, a review of this will be coming eventually, but it's probably a long ways away. There's plenty of good reviews out for this thing. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love it. Okay, so this thing is listed as a 36 millimeter case, so let's check that out. 36 millimeters in diameter, 13 and a half millimeters thick, and that includes that top hat crystal, 18 millimeter lug width, and an overall case length of 44 millimeters. So it's a very compact watch, and you can see just by this view here, there's pretty much no turn down to the lugs at all. So uh, keeping it short like that is pretty much a necessity. You do have a really thick protruding case back here, but I mean it all it all works pretty well in my opinion, just because it's such a small watch and because it's paying homage to the old bubble back uh, Rolex bubble back. So um, yeah, it actually works out pretty good, I think. So I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on the wrist for you. Here we are on my 7.5-inch wrist, and you can see it fits me pretty good. It does wear a little bit small, but, uh, I mean, it's 36 millimeters, so it's supposed to be a little small and, you know, kind of lends to that vintage vibe and vintage look to it. Here you can see pretty flat case profile, uh, but because it's so short, uh, it does fit me pretty good. Uh, leather strap, very comfortable, pretty balanced. Uh, crown doesn't dig in or anything like that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. The reflections, they aren't too bad. And uh, yeah, I think the crystal does a pretty good job. i got the sun trying to peek out right now, but I don't think it's going to happen today. Um, but either way, uh, the crystal does a really good job of cutting down on reflections. A very nice crystal. And yeah, I mean, it's plenty legible. Uh, no problems with it at all. And I think the Fotina and the brown just look really, really good pretty cool together. I'm going to try and zoom in, see if I can show you some of the sparkle on this dial here. But I mean, it just looks awesome. It just looks really, really cool. Very happy with the dial color. And we got a little bit more sun poking out. But yeah, I mean, uh, no problems reading this thing. Very happy with that. I'm going to go throw it on some of my straps and we'll get back to it. And here we are on a brown Rally leather strap. Rally is not probably the style for this watch, but I do like the color of it. it matches the dial pretty good. And I'm going to go try and scrounge up some other 18 millimeter straps and put them on here for you guys. And here we are on a really light, like sand colored NATO. And yeah, I think it looks all right. Could be a little bit darker would help, I think. Um, but yeah, there you can see the down the wrist shot. You can see it's lifted up pretty high. Um, I think this thing definitely wears a lot better on just a regular strap, uh, but it's not unwearable and it is actually still pretty comfortable on the NATO. So um, yeah, what do you guys think? Let's go back inside and we will get back to this review. Okay, so let's talk about the case finishing. So the case finishing on this is pretty simple. You have a vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs here, as you can see. And also in between these lugs, you got this little flat piece here that's also 
vertically brushed. You got a little tiny indent, as you can see there. It gives a little bit of interest to the case. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I do, I do like it. The sides are completely polished, as you probably saw earlier. Really nice polishing too, though. I mean, this polishing job is excellent. Um, you got really nice case shape here. It's not a, you know, just a flat side, so it's it's got some curve to it. It's got some round roundness to it. Uh, it's very bubbly, actually. Uh, very nicely done, though. Uh, same thing on the other side. Unsigned crown here. Nice, really nice onion style crown. And yeah, we're pretty happy with that that crown. And we'll talk about the crown action a little bit later when we talk about the movement. Uh, you can see the transitions from the brush to the polish are done really, really good. Um, I mean, this is this is like San Martin level finishing. Uh, very impressed with it. Very impressed with it. The bezel here, as you can see, all polished, completely polished, and it does look really, really good. Flipping it over to the case back, the bottom of the case is a um, just a vertical brushing here. Again, I mean, just even the bottom of this case is nicely finished. Uh, all these edges here, they're pretty nicely toned down. They're maybe a little bit sharp, but I think because of the bubble back, uh, it lifts it up off the wrist enough where it's never bothered me. The, those those edges don't dig in or anything like that. Same with the, the tips of the lugs here. Uh, it's a very comfortable watch. The case back itself, so this is that bubble back that you uh, you heard. This is where it gets the name from. Really unique case shape. Kind of got that Rolex style, uh, you know, the, the teeth here. Um, but it's a completely sterile case back, fully polished. It's going to scratch like crazy. Uh, but it does look pretty cool, I think. Let's test the crystal for sapphire. And as you can see, it is testing positive for sapphire. And I've got to say, this is a beautiful crystal. They used the same one on the other Boltony that I reviewed a while back. I'll leave the link up there for that. Um, really, really nice crystal. You can see protrudes quite a bit from the bezel there. Really, really nice. There's absolutely no distortion on it except, you know, right at the edges you can see the distortion. And, you know, really good anti-reflective coating on it. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a great crystal. Really, really good crystal. Very happy with it. All right, so let's talk about the dial on this thing. So, like I mentioned, it is offered in a few different configurations. You got a blue, a black, a uh, black California, uh, and then this one here. And I think they all look pretty good, but uh, I really like this one. I wanted the blue one, but now that I have this one in hand, I mean, th this brown color is awesome. I mean, it's just so cool. It's almost like a metallic-y copper color. Uh, it changes from like a really dark brown and, you know, lighting like this to a pretty bright brown. Uh, there is some metallic flake to it. I'll see if I can show you. It really shows up well in uh, in sunlight. Unfortunately, we have no sunlight today in Florida for some reason. Um, but it does look really, really good. Uh, very happy with it. You've got that Fotina on the hands and on the dial. The color matches pretty darn good, I think. Um, all the indices, you know, you got that California setup. So you got the Roman numerals up top and the Arabics down below. Uh, I really like it. My wife kind of threw her off the first time she saw it, but uh, it's just something you got to get used to, and it's fine after that. And I mean, it's all you know, really nice and big and legible, so no problems reading it. You've got that, you know, tan Fotina colored railroad minute track printed all the way around. It does kind of disappear in the uh, the dome, as you can see about right there down here at the five o'clock area. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's it's fine. Uh, but it, it does get from time to time it does get pretty hard to get a really accurate time reading on this thing. The branding on this is pretty simple. The only branding is this Baltany at the 12 o'clock there. Uh, very simple, clean. Uh, I don't really mind it at all. Looks pretty good in my opinion. I know I've seen some people that don't like it, but I mean it's 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 far, far, far from the worst branding I've seen on a watch. So um, yeah, pretty happy with that. The handset on this. So this is another thing that I wasn't really sure I'd like. This kind of flared hour or minute hand here with a really big oversized Mercedes hand. Um, I actually, I actually like it a lot. I'm finding that I really like legibility over style any day. So, uh, and the fact that these things are oversized, they're super easy to read, super easy to pick up, and very happy with them. You can see they are perfectly sized in my opinion. Uh, second hand reaches right out to that minute track. I'm mean, really, really happy with it. 
can start up the movement. And you got a nice sweep of the second hand there. I mean, the hands are polished really, really good. Uh, this, I mean, this is this is like San Martin level stuff. So uh, I am I'm pretty happy with, uh, yeah, the the case, the crystal, the dial, uh, even the loom on it. So I'm going to pop up a loom shot right now. And here you can see it against a couple other 36 millimeter field watches I have in the collection, and it sits right in the middle of them, as you would kind of expect. It's right in the middle of them, price wise. Um, the loom is actually pretty impressive on this really bright green burst at the beginning and then it fades pretty nicely. Um, I can read it in the middle of the night. I've got no real problems. You can see at the end of the 15 minute mark here that the dial is starting to fade a little bit more, but it's still, you know, plenty legible. I've, I've worn this to bed and woken up in the middle of the night and I can read the time just fine. So, um, that, that gives it a pass in my book and, uh, yeah, pretty happy with it. Let's talk about the movement in this thing. So the movement is operated by this three o'clock screw down crown. The screw in, screw out action is very smooth. You got no problems with that at all. Really cool looking crown too. There's actually quite a bit of detail in that crown. Um, you know, it's got some different uh, chamfers here and there and dips and curves and uh, yeah, really cool. Kind of an onion-ish style crown. Uh, plenty of grip no issues there so the movement inside is the Seiko NH38 so there is no ghost eight position which is nice so you pull it out to the first position here it hacks the movement um, and that's your time setting position obviously uh, if you know the NH35 you know the NH38 40 hours of power reserve six ticks of the second hand every second and uh, yeah it hacks it hand winds and uh, it's very reliable very accurate and I've had no problems with it. This one's actually been really accurate. I think it's two seconds a day fast. So uh, really happy with that. So let's talk about the strap. So like I mentioned earlier, you do get a option of either a black NATO strap, which is a pretty decent NATO strap, or you get this brown tannish leather strap, which again is a pretty decent strap. It's not nothing special, but uh, it's definitely not bad uh, usable, I think. And I think it's a pretty good color match for this one. Uh, you get minimal stitching here. No quick release, which is kind of a bummer to me. Uh, I, I kind of expect that on a watch of this price. Um, you do have genuine leather here on the bottom. Again, minimal stitching. Uh, the watch strap, it's fairly flexible. It could be a little bit better. It does have a leather smell to it, so I, I, do in, I am inclined to believe that it is a actual leather watch. You got one floating keeper, one stationary keeper. And uh, yeah, it, it's been fine. The buckle here is probably my main complaint about it. Uh, it's a bead blasted buckle. Same issue with the NATO strap. It comes with bead blasted hardware. Um, as long as it's the same NATO strap that I got with my old Baltany, uh, it comes with this bead blasted. And uh, it just doesn't, doesn't match the case at all. Uh, just put a polished buckle on that or a brush buckle or something and I'd be happy. But that's something you can even switch out yourself. Pretty simple. So um, not a huge deal. So there you go, guys. That's the Baltany Bubble Back. It's a 36 millimeter field watch, vintage inspired. Uh, it does everything right. Very little is wrong with this thing. Uh, maybe sits up just a little bit tall if you throw it on a, a single pass or double pass strap. Uh, but otherwise... Uh, I'm very happy with this watch. Pretty cool looking watch. I like the brown. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this thing. If you are interested in this watch now, I will be leaving an uh, affiliate link down below that takes you right to the Octopus Crack and Alley store. And uh, yeah, I, I think these things are pretty, pretty darn cool. Really nice package for the money, in my opinion. I'm also going to leave my Instagram account down below. I'll be posting pictures of this thing probably, uh, as well as watches that are coming up on the channel. Also check us out on Reddit, Chinese Watches. I'll be leaving that down below. Um, yeah, it's usually where I post my new watches first before I can get a chance to get a review and then you can ask me questions during that if you want to or you know have me focus on something during the review. Um, but yeah, go check me out in those locations. If you guys have any questions or comments, please drop them down below. Let me know what you guys think of this thing. Uh, really cool watch. I do like it. And I'm happy to see more vintage inspired watches coming from the likes of Baltany. I think they offer some pretty cool watches, uh, really high quality watches as well. I think that's about it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.